program. So okay, members, uh, we are now in public session. Welcome to today's meeting of the Public Accounts Committee. Members, mobile phones must be set to airplane mode and on silent or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with assembly recording. <coughs> the session is being recorded in video audio and can be accessed live via online streaming either on the assembly website or democracy live. Okay, we're now in public session and agenda item one. Apologies, have we any apologies? No. Nope. Agenda item two then is minutes of the 1st of October, which are pages 6 to 13 of your pack. Are members content that I sign them? Agreed. 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 Okay. Okay, agenda item three then is members' interests. Members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial or other interests in the register of members' interests. Does any member have any interest to declare this afternoon? Nope. Okay, agenda item four then, matters arising. It was agreed at last week's meetings that I write to Ms. Sue Gray, uh, the accounting officer and permanent secretary of the Department of Finance. <coughs> Excuse me, regarding gaps in their, her evidence, and also to ask current officials to return to give further evidence. Ms. Gray and her officials will be returning to the committee on the 22nd of October 2020, and the letter dated the 5th of October is in your table pack, pages 3 to 4. Okay, members content? Members, also at last week's meeting, the committee agreed to prepare a press release regarding the Landway project and digital transformation evidence session on the 24th of September. The clerk has uh, since spoken to comms and a press conference has been prepared. Okay, um, members, we will uh, consider this under any other business uh, in closed session. Also, at last week's meeting, when discussing the draft report inquiry into capital, uh, major capital projects, there was a suggestion to send a letter to the First and Deputy First Ministers on the role of the Northern Ireland Head of the Civil Service. And it was revised to mirror the head of the civil service role in Scotland and Wales to ensure that the head of the civil service is designated principal officer accounting for Northern Ireland civil services. And see paragraph 4 at page 7 and the recommendations at page 11 of your confidential pack. Um, members, can I just ask, are members content that we send a letter to First and Deputy First Ministers, or are you content that having a recommendation in the report is sufficient? I have to say, it's my view that. Um, Having in the report is good, and I have no difficulty with that. Um, I also think that when we put out a press release uh, after we have our next session, if we do so with Miss Gray, um, it should be included in that. But I see absolutely no reason why we shouldn't send a letter as well to, to both uh, ministers, Mr. Beggs. I think the issue which um, certainly merits that we do so would be that we're still in the recruitment stage. Yes. The head of civil service, and if you wait until the contract is signed, it's maybe too late to yeah. have that addition. Yeah. And it's also the case that there's a, uh, some speculation in the media that the head of the civil service role might be changed. So I think all of that is timely uh, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of that. I, I just do not want to be in a position, I'll be honest, uh, of, of being in uh, a committee where we have. Um, answers given that were given to this committee uh, earlier in the year, and those members who were on the committee will understand what I mean at that stage. So, members content that the letter goes to Mrs. Foster and Ms. O'Neill around that. Is that okay? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Okay, members, I referred to an email from Richard Pengelly, which is dated the 5th of October 2020. Um, and you, and the, as you will see, it says in that email, please pass on my thanks to the Chair and the Committee for the understanding of the pressurised position we find ourselves in. The deferral of this session is greatly appreciated and will allow us to continue to focus on our response to COVID. I look forward to engaging with the Committee on this important issue in the new year. Members content? Great. Content. Great. Okay. Members, we continue on in public session and we're agenda item five. Um, I refer to the correspondence dated 1 of October 2020 at page 17 of your pack from the Committee for Communities in regards to the Charity Commission for Northern Ireland. Uh, the Committee for Communities has agreed to provide PAC with an update on the outcome of their ministerial briefing 
on the ramifications of the recent court decision regarding the Charity Commission. Members content? Okay. Uh, members refer to correspondence dated the 1st of October 2020, page 18 of your pack from the Justice Committee in regards to mental health in the criminal justice system. Um, are members content that the clerk writes back informing the Justice Committee of the reasons why the Committee has decided not to proceed with this inquiry? Agreed? Agreed. Okay. Members refer to the correspondence dated the 2nd of October 2020, pages 19 to 22 of your pack from the Treasurer Officer of Accounts in regards to the annual theft and fraud report. The TOA has provided a breakdown of the 2018-19 508k value of fraud, details of, of collaboration in places to address illegal dumping, formation, uh, information that they will be requesting uh, from the fraud forum meetings are in Increased and the confirmation that a section of the emerging COVID-19 fraud will be included in the 1920 annual theft and fraud report in line with the committee's request. Okay, everybody happy? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. What one query is on page 22. It was about the abuse of position assets, exploitation of information. And it said one of the cases accounted for over half the overall value. I don't know whether we can get a bit more information on that case, but it's obviously very concerning that it accounted for over half the value. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do you want to write and ask for that information? Yeah. yeah. Members contend that we do so. Okay. Um, one of the things, as you know, um, I am very keen that we pursue around that issue is the issue of illegal dumping, which I think has got to an appalling level, and uh, not just because of the appalling case that uh, occurred in my own constituency. And a number of uh, months ago there, but it is now uh, something which is fairly prevalent across Northern Ireland. Um, okay, moving on then. Uh, refer to the correspondence 5th of October 2020 in your pack at pages 23 to 32 from the Audit Committee regarding the Northern Ireland Audit Office budget requirements for 21-24 and to be eventually included in the Executive's draft budget. Included is a briefing paper at pages 24 and 25 from Mr Donnelly, which provides an outline of the Northern Ireland Audit Office's position. The Audit Committee welcomed the views from the Public Accounts Committee in relation to the NIAO's budget forecast for 2024. <coughs> the paper sets out the plans for invest, uh, sorry, in investing in the digitisation of audits alongside the learning and development of its plans, sorry, of its staff. Also refers to a three-year forward work programme to deliver for Public Accounts Committee, which is being flexed in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, there are additional resources uh, and pressures being placed on the Northern Ireland Law Office to respond to one of the key recommendations in the public inquiry into the renewable heat incentive scheme i.e. to access and validate the extent of the progress in implementing the lessons learned. The requested increase for 2021-22 is 425,000, which is 5.1%, with increases of 335,000 to 0.1% and 120.3% in the following two years. This is summarised in Table 2 of your pack. Have members any comments? Are members content? Certainly, sure. Is that not a bit high? The five percent, five. Mm -hmm. It's certainly much higher than those working in the public public domain will be getting and have been getting. Mostly in a round an inflationary rise, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Well, do members want to uh, ask some questions, Mr. Beggs? You? Yeah, I think we'd be right to ask questions about why it's significantly above inflation. Uh, it may well be justified. Don't know, but we have to ask yeah. the question. It obviously said it said it out with no detail, and it's and why it's five point one. So, do you want to ask those questions then, Member, Mr. O'Toole? Yeah, I, we should certainly should ask the question. But my only comment is, on this industry, that five percent is that's not an above inflation. That's not a pay increase. That's just an increase in the budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's, no, there's no. Yes, but yeah, they, they, no doubt that within that. The annual budget that they get will be pay rises, though. That's the or, so, or pension or something. Yeah. Okay, members, agreed. agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So we're now going to write to them then and ask those questions, um, if that's okay. I refer to correspondence from Katrina Godfrey dated the fifth of October, twenty 
2020 in your table pack at pages 5 to 22. The letter is a response to our letter of the 23rd of September requesting further information following on from the evidence session on the 8th of July. Information includes details on strategic planning directorate, casework and how the department aims to improve the response times for statutory consultees to the planning process. A list of other actions the department is taking forward through the planning forum and the details of the membership of the planning forum. Are members content? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Members are referred to your to correspondence received from Leslie Hogg, the clerk to the Assembly, dated the 7th of October 2020, in your table packs, um, pages 23 to 24. Regarding the availability of additional committee meeting rooms, Ms Hogg has outlined the issues con uh, concerning use of the Chamber and Members' dining room and understands that the Chair's liaison committee are right, agreed to write to the Speaker requesting use of those forms. Members, as the chair of the Chair's Liaison Committee, I can advise you that we had a meeting on Tuesday and it was unanimously agreed by uh, all parties, and I think most of the chairs were there, not all but most of them, uh, that a letter would be sent to the Speaker. Uh, and what essentially the uh, clerk uh, was, was telling the group was that uh, it, essentially if the Speaker agrees it will happen. Uh, there was some frustration expressed. Um, across parties that we haven't got to the point where it is actually being used at the moment, given the circumstances and given the fact that um, the, the, the number of cases that are coming in each day, um, particularly in the last week in Northern Ireland, you know, this is something which we need to prepare for and, and manage and deal with over the next number of months, not just out there in terms of uh, the government tackling the issue uh, uh, and protecting our people, but also here in terms of uh, as a place of work protecting members and those who are members of staff. So I mean it was forcibly the point was forcibly made that um, both the uh, assembly chamber and the members dining room should be deployed during this period for um, that use. There are some issues uh, of a technical nature in terms of recording and, and, and so on. But you know I don't think they're insurmountable. Uh, and I do think that, um, given the pressures that are on from committees, and some committees now want to move to having two meetings a week, um, uh, then you know this needs to happen as soon as possible. I agreed the wording of that letter yesterday, so that will go to the speaker. Okay. Thank you. Right. Agenda item six is inquiry into the special education needs briefing session, <coughs> and your papers are pages thirty-four to one hundred and eighty-seven. <coughs> At this stage, I would invite Mr. Karen Donnelly, the Controller and Auditor General, um, Ms. Colette Keane, Director, and Ms. Suzanne Murphy, Audit Manager, to the table. Ms. Karen Armstrong, Senior Auditor, will be joining the meeting remotely. I would ask our witnesses to remain at each end of the table uh, to ensure we are complying with the two metre rule. Broadcasting, can you please bring uh, Karen Armstrong into the meeting? And Ms. Armstrong, can I ask, can you see and hear us? We can't hear you. Are you muted? Yes, I'm muted. You, you, we can hear you now. You're very welcome. Good afternoon. Um, okay. Members, uh, our third inquiry is into special education needs. and uh, Included in your pack is the Northern Ireland Audit Office's previous report on special education needs dated the 27th of June um, 2027. Although that obviously can't be right. Um, yeah. I refer to pages 34 to 97 of your pack and also pages 98 to 167 of your pack in the most recent Northern Ireland Audit Office report, Impact Review of Special Education Needs, dated the 29th of September 2020. Members, I refer to the Northern Ireland Audit Office briefing paper, Impact Review of Special Education Needs, dated the 15th of October 2020, and a restricted paper at pages 172 and 187 of your pack. Uh, at this stage, we'd like to um, invite and uh, welcome Mr. Donnelly and his team to the meeting. And I would ask the, the clerk if we could now move into closed session for this discussion on next week's evidence session. Are members agreed? Agreed. Okay. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber program sound. This is the Northern Ireland.